Hey what's going on guys, my name is Mikey and in today's video we're going to be talking about how you could take a nap without waking up tired. Now I know a bunch of us take a nap for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, sometimes even 30 minutes or 2 hours and we wake up tired and we're trying to figure out exactly why we're waking up so tired. Same thing when we sleep at night, sometimes we sleep for 7 hours, 8 hours or even 9 hours and we wake up and we're really really tired. So in today's video we're going to be figuring out exactly what is the science behind waking up tired and how we can ensure that every time we go to sleep we always wake up without feeling tired. Now we're gonna start off by talking about the sleep cycle. Now there are four stages to the sleep cycle and as you progress through the stages, your sleep actually becomes deeper and deeper. So stage one is the lighted sleep, which is REM sleep, which stands for rapid eye movement sleep. Then we have stage two, stage three, and stage four. And stage four is actually the deepest sleep that you have. Now when you go to sleep, you actually start with stage two and you end with stage one. I know it's a bit confusing, but you start with stage two, then stage three, then stage four, with your, which is your deepest sleep, and then you go to REM sleep. And this this whole process takes roughly 90 minutes. Now we're going to start off by talking about the actual sleep cycle and the sleep cycle is very important if you want to figure out exactly how to wake up without feeling lethargic and how to wake up ensuring that you are very very refreshed to the point where you might not even need coffee when you wake up and it just doesn't necessarily mean that you're sleeping seven and a half eight hours or nine hours to feel very refreshed. Once you understand exactly how the sleep cycle works you can figure out exactly how to get a short amount of sleep in while also waking up feeling refreshed. Now there are four stages in the sleep cycle. Stage one is is REM sleep which is rapid eye movement sleep and that is when your eye is moving a lot stage 2 is basically the beginning of your first sleep cycle so your sleep cycle is 90 minutes and you actually start with stage 2 and end with stage 1 I know it's a bit confusing but they actually name the sleep cycles based on how light or deep into sleep you are so you start with stage 2 then you go to stage 3 then stage 4 and then you drop back up to stage 1 which is REM sleep now stage 2 is the beginning of your sleep so right when you go to your bed and you know you get tucked in the first thing that happens is is you move into stage two. This usually takes five to 10 minutes and your body hasn't fully, fully relaxed. It's slowly starting to um, you know, unwind and relax and you might have some body twitches. And in this stage, this is actually where the information that you learn throughout the day is learned in your head and it's kept secure. Now in stage three, this is where your body starts to decrease in temperature, you become more relaxed. And this is a bit longer than stage two. In stage three, it's around 10 to 25 minutes and your body starts to fully relax, your muscles start to fully relax. And this is basically preparing your body for stage four, which is the deepest form of sleep. Now stage four usually lasts 20 to 40 minutes in your first sleep cycle. Each sleep cycle is 90 minutes. So you got to keep that in mind because later on when we talk in the video, how to ensure that every time you wake up, you are feeling refreshed. You need to remember that your sleep cycle is 90 minutes. Now in this stage, this is where all the information you learn throughout the day is saved into your long term memory. And this is really important because if you don't have a lot of sleeps where you reach stage four, then a lot of the information that you learn throughout the day will not be saved into your long term memory. Now after stage stage four, just like I told you guys earlier, then we jump back up to REM sleep, which is actually stage one. Now this is where it gets a bit confusing. Now after stage four, we go back to stage one. Now just like I told you earlier, the stages were named on how deep of sleep you were in. So stage four is the deepest form of sleep, and stage one is the lightest form of sleep, also known as rapid eye movement sleep. Now in rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep, this is where your eyes are moving a lot. This is where most of your dreams actually take place. And this is also where your most vivid dreams take place. So if you guys have ever had a dream that you really remember, like very very vividly and you wake up and you tell all your friends about it that most likely took place during REM sleep now the only two body parts or I guess two areas in your body that are functioning during REM sleep are your eyes because they're twitching a lot and your intercostal muscles that are controlling your breathing everything else in the body is paralyzed so you are essentially in paralysis while you are vivid dreaming now throughout the night your REM sleep actually increases in duration while stage four which is your deepest form of sleep decreases in duration so in the beginning of your sleep cycle or at least in the first sleep cycle out of the three or four that you might have on a regular night your REM sleep might be 10 to 20 minutes but throughout the night it can increase as much as one hour which is actually two-thirds of your total sleep cycle while deep sleep decreases in duration throughout the night now this moves on to our next question and why people wake up so tired and lethargic and very groggy when they wake up from a nap or from a regular sleep even after they sleep like nine or ten hours now the reason why is because people wake up during stage four or even stage three of their sleep cycle so like i told you earlier as you move through the stages your sleep becomes deeper and deeper so if you wake up during stage four which in the beginning of your sleep cycle is 20 to 45 minutes then you're going to feel very very tired so let me give you an example of a regular nap so a lot of people like taking naps for 
for 30 minutes to one hour, okay? Now we know that stage two, which is the first stage that you enter when you go to sleep, is around five to 10 minutes. And we also know that stage three is around 10 to 20 minutes. So best case scenario where stage two and three are the longest possible, you're gonna reach stage four by the 30 minute mark. So if someone takes a nap for a duration of 30 minutes to one hour and 15 minutes, then you're gonna wake up feeling very, very tired. That's why a lot of people have the whole concept of power nap. Now power nap actually makes a lot of sense because your goal is to try to wake up before stage four. Because when you wake up in stage four, that's when you feel the most tired. So if you take a nap for uh, five to 25 minutes, that's best case scenario because you're ensuring that you don't wake up in your stage four of the sleep cycle. Anything longer than that will actually affect your whole day. Like think about it, how many times have you taken a nap for an hour and you felt very, very refreshed to take on the day? Yes, it might be a placebo effect where you tell yourself, oh, I just took a nap so I must feel refreshed. But realistically, based on the science, if you actually take a nap for one hour and you wake up during deep sleep, you're gonna feel way more lethargic than if you didn't take a nap at all. Now let's talk about what you shouldn't do before you go to sleep because it could actually affect your REM sleep. Now you shouldn't drink alcohol right before you go to sleep. And the reason why is because alcohol actually decreases the amount of time that you spend in REM sleep and it increases the amount of time that you spend in deep sleep. So you're more often than not gonna end up waking up in stage four, which is the deepest form of your sleep and wake up while you're tired, lethargic and very groggy. And that's probably gonna ruin your whole day. Now the second thing you shouldn't do is use your phone before you go to sleep. But more specifically, you shouldn't use your phone while the blue light is on. Now we're all guilty of the fact of using our phones before we go to sleep or at least a couple minutes before we go to sleep but what we could do to actually fix that is turning on night shift mode on your phone and what this does this allows your screen to be a bit warmer and it removes all the blue light now the issue with blue light and how it actually affects your sleep is it decreases the amount of time that you spend in REM sleep because it has a higher chance of leading to early macular degeneration because it goes straight to your retina which actually ruins your retina and if you know anything about the eye you know that the retina is actually the most important part of the eye so what should you do if you wanna wake up refreshed every single time? So like I said for the naps, you wanna make sure that you take a nap less than 25 minutes. So 25 minutes or less, because you wanna ensure that you don't enter stage four of your sleep cycle. Now, if you're going to sleep overnight, the best case scenario would be if you wake up right after you finish REM sleep, because we know that REM is very important for your sleep and we wanna ensure we spend the most amount of time in REM in one sleep sitting. So what I would recommend is you sleep in 90 minute increments. So let's say you wanted to wake up at 7 a.m. and right now it's midnight. So you have seven hours of total that you could sleep for however we know that if you wake up during stage four of sleeping that is probably the worst thing you could do to yourself because you're gonna wake up tired for the whole day so what you should do is you should sleep in 90 minute increments so if you sleep in 90 minute or one hour hour and a half increments you can either sleep one hour and a half three hours four hours and a half six hours or seven hours and a half but we know that we want to be awake by seven so if you sleep seven hours and a half you're gonna be awake 7 30. so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to do it the one hour and a half increment before that so which would be six hours so you fall asleep at midnight you wake up at 6 a.m yes i know it sucks so you wake up one hour before and you basically have one hour of doing nothing but think of that one hour like something else that you could do that you want that you plan to do later on in the day and believe me if you do that you're going to wake up way more refreshed than if you slept those seven hours try it out for a week what do you have to lose and see how it actually works out and comment down below how it actually works out for you now what should you do if you like snoozing your alarms? Now I'm very guilty of waking up and having like five to 10 alarms just so I could wake up by the exact time that I want. And I love waking up and snoozing my alarm. I probably think it's one of the best feelings in the morning when you wake up and you know that you can go back to sleep. So what I would re recommend is setting your alarm 90 minutes before you need to wake up. So let's go back to our old example. Let's say it's midnight and you need to be up by 8 a.m. So if you're going by the 90 minute rule, then you have seven and a half hours of sleeping. So that would mean you wake up at 7.30 a.m. But if you like snoozing, what I would do is I would I would set an alarm for 6 a.m. and I would snooze that specific alarm. So what I would do is I would set an alarm for 6 a.m. This way, I'll wake up at 6 a.m., I can snooze my alarm, and then I can get another full sleep cycle in before I need to wake up. And this is the best way that you will feel refreshed. Now, realistically, snoozing your alarm actually doesn't have any benefit at all. It's all in your head. But if you do like snoozing your alarm just like me, then try this method and let me know how it works in the comments down below. Now, just to recap everything we said, we said there's four different stages of sleeping. We said that stage one is the lightest stage of sleep. Stage four is the deepest stage of sleep. You wanna make sure that you wake up during the lighter stages of sleep, either after REM or during stage two or three. Um, and we also said that taking a nap, make sure it's 25 minutes or less. 
We also said that when you sleep, make sure you sleep for 90 minute intervals if you're sleeping overnight. And if you want to snooze your alarm, set your alarm 90 minutes before you need to actually wake up. So then you could have one full sleep cycle before you wake up. Now, if anybody has any questions about anything related to sleep or anything related to research articles or anything about me, feel free to leave it down below in the comments. And I really appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this information was very helpful for you guys. Let me know if it was down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you did enjoy it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care and take it easy.